Good evening, my friends. Here we are at the Monday Night Play Along Bluegrass Jam. This is the second summer check-in. Very well maybe the last summer check-in. Things are heating up again, so to speak. It's a heat wave here in Denver, I tell you what. But I'll be out and about quite a bit the rest of the summer, uh, as probably many of you are. So I figure it's good to check in a couple times, uh, say hey to some of my new friends from Augusta Bluegrass Week last week, who I worked with in the guitar class, say hey to all of you who are participating in the Flat Picking Academy, and all of the rest of our bluegrass buddies out there in the ether world. So I'm going to double check on the live streams and then we're going to get started. I hope you all are doing okay and weathering the heat wherever you are. We sure did have a good time at Augusta Bluegrass Week. It is truly one of the premier events in the country and one of my favorites. Just a big part of my musical heritage as I've as I have professed time and time again. Okay, we're live on Facebook. Let's check the YouTube channel. Looks like we are also live on YouTube. I'll pull that up. Okay, great. So be sure to chime in. Let us know how you're doing, where you are, what you are picking on. And of course, anything else you might need from me. I'll try to arrange this thing so it's not in the shot and distracting you. All right, so we're starting on Hand Me Down My Walking Cane, and we might have a bunch of newcomers here uh, this evening, so I'm gonna kind of give you a brief run through of how this goes. It's just a play along, you're playing along with me, but I'm providing you a solid rhythm track to work on your kickoffs, work on your breaks. Of course, you can work on your lead and harmony singing along with my presentation of the song. And you can work on your rhythm playing while I'm taking solos or breaks on the songs and tunes. You can draw some inspiration from what I'm playing on the breaks. And it's just like you and me playing back and forth. Um, and you can hear me, obviously, but I can't hear you. I wish I could, but there's no way technologically to, to do that, especially with lots of folks playing along at once. So, um, and this is not meant to be a lesson necessarily, this is like a, a an instructor-led jam, right? Like a slow jam at a, at a music camp, where I just give you a brief run through of the song, and then you are just gonna go for it and play along. You always have this reference to come back to after the fact if you want to give it another run through, or just take some time and learn the song if you don't know it and then come back to it. But this is just like a jam, where uh, the more you do this kind of thing, the more you're being put on the spot, the better you're going to learn the repertoire, and also the better you are going to be at just winging it if you don't know the songs and the tunes, because there are very similar melodies, very similar chord changes throughout all of these bluegrass standards. So here we go, we're starting with Hand Me Down My Walking Cane. And I wanna give a big thanks to Chuck Molnar and the Molnar family for letting me use their lovely home uh, here in Denver to host the jam. They have a ripping fast internet and everything's running really smooth so far. So, so thank you Chuck and the family for letting me do this. Okay, so this song goes and I shout the chord numbers as we go, right? So you gotta learn your one, four, fives if you don't know them yet. But in any case, we're in the key of G here, and this song goes. And a one, and a one, to the five, back to one, and a four, That's it in 
the key of G, your one and your four and your five. Um, and that's the melody. I'm singing the melody, so I'm kind of getting it all done at once, right? And I'll turn on the click here. We're starting at a nice slow tempo here at the slow jam. And as we move through the evening, of course, we got the mid tempo and the fast jams coming up. So here's a nice, slow, steady tempo. And I, I like the metronome on the, on the ands, on the backbeat. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and one. So if you're not used to that, you'll get used to it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be giving you the beats, right? So you don't have to rely on your sense of that. But just know that this is where the mandolin chop is. That's how I like to practice with my, with my metronome. It helps the music groove and swing that much better. So here's how I might kick off the song. And a kick off is simply a, a melodic version, stating the melody, using whatever tools and tricks you have uh, associated with your instrument. So here I go kicking off Walking Cane. It might sound like this. A one, two, three. up a version of the melody. But I have a bunch of tricks around it because I've played this song a bunch of times and I sort of have my kickoff worked out. So if you don't have a good kickoff worked out, just play the melody and then you'll know uh, a process by which you can work toward um, developing a kickoff here. Okay, that's enough explanation. We're just going to roll through the songs at this point. So kick us off on Hand Me Down My Walking Cane in the key of G. A one, two, one, two, three. Hand me down. 
play it. Okay, <laughs> well, we were off to a good start there. At least it didn't happen in the middle of a song. Uh, but it looks like we didn't lose the video thread, so that's a good thing. Um, looks like we're still live on YouTube. And, wow, we're still live on Facebook. Okay. I hope you didn't hear me swear when the when the camera turned off. Usually we lose the video when that happens. Okay, we're still here. Wow, it's a miracle. Okay, well, we'll just keep moving on. Uh, we're gonna get to the next song and then I will jump in and shout at you all and check in with you. But let me just make sure this isn't too good to be true here. Um, yeah, okay. Wow. Well, Caster might have... Caster may have um, fixed that issue on their end. Um, okay, good. So I'm not going to tempt fate too much here. But in the past, whenever I lose the signal the whole thing goes away and we have to start a new thread, but it looks like that didn't happen this time. So we're just going to keep going. How about that? On and on in the key of G. Now this is a good old Bill Monroe classic. It is a trio throughout. If you are singing harmony and working on your your lead and your baritone parts, uh, this is a great way to practice them. Uh, okay, so here's how the song goes. In the key of G. One and one and four and a one. One and one and a five. One and one, four.
I'll turn on the click here and I'll demonstrate how I might kick this off today. One, two, three. <laughs> You're welcome to go back and learn that note for note, you guitar players, if you want. Banjo players, you know what to do. Fiddle players tend to know what to do. Guitar players don't often kick off songs in bluegrass, so that's part of, part of what I'm encouraging all you uh, guitar players out there to do. Okay, no matter what you're playing, I'm going to count you in, and you're going to kick us off on on and on in the key of G. A one. Two. A one. Two, three.
me. Okay, I sneaked that ending here, that ending in on you, and I was able to to stop the click so we could do the real ending of on and on. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes we just have to do a standard ending because of the metronome. But there you go. There's on and on. And uh, I got cut off when I was starting to explain for the newcomers. This, when I kind of dip the neck, that, that means we're ending the song. So that's like a foot kick in a jam. And this means we're going to tag it. Okay, how's everybody doing? Sandy in Bakersfield playing the, playing the hot banjo, trying to stay cool out there in, in, in California. Nice to have you here, Sandy. Hello, Denmark. Waiting to join in with the Gibson mandolin and a Taylor guitar, but not at the same time. That would be quite a feat. Okay, hello, Anita, my friend in Michigan. 2008 Collings OM2H, wonderful. Hello, Elizabeth. From Tallahassee, Florida. All right, great having you in my class at Augusta Bluegrass Week. Thank you for joining in on the jam. And hello, Reiko, Pastor Zek, up in Buffalo. Nice to have you here as well. And thanks for joining us at Augusta Heritage Center Bluegrass Week. That was quite a week. Uh, definitely inspiring to have you all in my group. And hello in Flagler Beach, SCFB. That's your handle on the YouTube. And hello Blake Addison. Hello Chris Womack in North Carolina with a mandolin. And Blake is in Lithia Springs, Georgia, picking on the old Martin guitar. Okay. Kevin Stainbeck. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you didn't hear me. I was I I I, I, I let out an exclamation when the thing shut down. And <laughs> okay. That's interesting because I use I use caster IO caster is a re is like a it's like restream it, it lets me stream to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time and I could stream to lots of other channels if I had lots of other channels but it used to be that it would just kill the stream and you'd have to come back on a new one but maybe they changed that I hope they did I'm glad we didn't lose the signal there and Johnny Halpern all right we got lots of friends from from Augusta Bluegrass Week here. Nice to see you, Jonathan. And Jake Bush, checking in from Littleton, Colorado, on your Turkey Creek mandolin. I bet that sounds really good. Kevin Stainbeck is in State Road, North Carolina, playing a Santa Cruz guitar, okay. And hello, Doug Herkum. Hello, Bob Dickinson. Dobro Bob, hey, hey. Ran into you uh, at Augusta as well. And you are playing the Dobro, Dobro Bob, okay. And here in Facebook land, we got Jim Hanaway in New Jersey, one of our longtime ever stalwart Monday jammers. Hello, Mike Cluverius, who lent me your clothes last week when my luggage was lost at Southwest. Nice to see you, Mike. Uh, Scott Crone. Yep, it's all working now again. Thanks for chiming in there, Scott. And let's pick. There's Reiko again. I'm in Buffalo. Jennifer Hayden. Nice to see you. Kara. Kara Zek, thank you again for being in my class at Augusta as well. Nice to see you here. Kara in Buffalo. Colin Burns is up late in the UK, sat in the middle of a field on her way home from a festival. We'll catch it when you get home. Okay. And uh, Rich, hello Rich, also from, uh, from my class over at Augusta. Nice to see you in New Jersey. And um, actually, wait a minute, different Rich, but nice to see you here anyhow. And uh, let's see, well, maybe this is the same Rich. Anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to catch up here. Robert Andrews, Julie Reichler playing the ukulele, wonderful. Hello, John Madron in Steamboat Springs. And hello, Noah Pulver. Yeah, a lot of us from the class. Well, thank you all for chiming in. And... Anywhere you are around the world, thank you so much for being here. Let's get back to the music. We've got Will the Roses Bloom Where She Lies Sleeping, one of my favorite songs. And we'll be at about this tempo. Let's go right about there. Here's how it goes. In the key of C. And a one.
strum style kickoff. Trying to be very accurate on the melody there because this is just one of those really lovely melodies from Flat and Scrubs. So go ahead and kick us off on Will the Roses Bloom Where She Lies Sleeping in the key of C. A one, two, one, two, three. you all are feeling the same way. And here's our first instrumental of the slow jam set. This will be Whiskey Before Breakfast in the key of D. I'm going to go ahead and capo to play this out of C position. This is one of those super standards that really wherever you go, Folks familiar with the style will have a version of this to play. So, how about same tempo? Right here where we were. And this one goes, it has it has a couple of things going on, but, but really the chord changes are simple. It goes one and a one, one and a one, four, one and a five. That's 
the A part. The B, and that happens twice. The B part goes one and one, one and one, two minor to the five. One, five, four, one, four, one, five, one. One, 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 and one, and two minor five. One and a five, and a four, and a one, four, and a one, and a five, and a one. So some busy chord changes, but it's simple. It's all one, four, five, except for that minor two chord, which if I'm capoed, it's a D minor, but in actual concert key, it's an E minor. Okay, so being an instrumental, I'm going to kick it off. So I'll kick it off with taters, and I will play through it once, and then you play it after me. Then I'll play it again, and then you play it again. So twice each, and then you tag it at the end. Here we go. I'll kick us off on Whiskey Before Breakfast in the key of D. There we go, whiskey for breakfast. And that is the same rich. Okay, thank you for filling me in there. My, I'm, I'm kind of nearsighted, so it's hard for me to see 
all the way over to your photo. Um, yes, Kara, the live streams uh, exist on this Facebook page and also on the YouTube channel. There's a playlist, and they will be they will be there in perpetuity. So you can always go back and play along. And hello, Phyllis, another friend from our guitar class. And you'll catch, uh, well, catch us on the, um, on the archive. Hi, Robert Andrews. And hello, Uber Jam Sam on a Koa Larave. Very cool. Hello, Marilyn Schnibble. Fiddling, fiddling away. Schnib. Marilyn Schnib. Schnib. Schnibba. Sorry. I'm um, uh, probably butchering your last name there. Fiddling away in Bend, Oregon. Okay, great. A lot of folks playing along tonight. I love to see that. Remember the mid-tempo jam will follow immediately after this, probably immediately, but it'll be at uh, uh, quarter till when that begins. So please stick around and keep pushing yourselves up to performance tempo. Okay, and then the fast jam follows that, so you know what to do. Keep on playing. Nine pound hammer in the key of A. This will... Um, I'm just kind of ticking up a couple notches on the tempo as we go through this. So, in other words, this slow jam is like slower than the songs go. On the mid-tempo jam, I try to select songs that actually live at that mid-tempo. And then at the fast jam, I try to select songs that actually live at that fast tempo. So, um, so here's how Nine Pound Hammer would go in the key of A. And I'm going to stay capo and play this G position, but wherever you're at, here's the chord changes. And a one, and a four, and a one, and a five, and a one, and a one, and a four, and one, and a five. Off would go. So kick us off here on the nine pound hammer in the key of A. A one, two, one, two, three.
Okay, we did it. Nine pound hammer. Okay, moving right along. What do we have next on the list? Salt Creek, our second instrumental of the set. And like I said, I'm just inching our way up here, just taking tiny increments of tempo to move us toward the mid-tempo range, where we'll begin in just a little less than 30 minutes. So here we go, Salt Creek goes like this. The chord changes are in the key of A. One, 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 and four. Flat seven, flat seven, flat seven, five. One and one and one and four. Flat seven, flat seven, five, one. So the flat seven in this key is, um, if I'm capoed playing a guitar like this, it's an F chord. But the actual concert chord, if you're not capoed, is a G. Okay? So one more time, here's the A part. One, 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 and four. Flat seven, flat seven, flat seven, five. One and one and one and four. Flat seven, flat seven, five, one. Da, 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 flat seven, flat seven. So this being an instrumental, again, I will kick it off, and let's go twice all the way through. So I'll play it, and then you play it, then I play it again, then you play it again, and then you tag it after that second time. Okay? So here we go. Salt Creek in the key of A. I'm going to kick us off.
right, we got a couple more songs here. This is a song that actually does live in the slow tempo, and we will actually, actually be backing the tempo down for this one in the key of B-flat, uh, down where the river bends. So I am going to capo three and play this out of G position. Those of you who don't know that concept yet, uh, capo three G chord is, is key of B-flat. And this song is quite lovely. Ooh, we got some thunder in the vicinity. I'm just double checking my tuning, make sure I haven't gone sharp with the capo and the Old Red, my old Martin here, seems to be holding up just fine. Great, okay, that one's a little sharp. Well, like many of us in attendance here, I'm fired up from a week at Augusta Heritage Center, Bluegrass Week, back there in Elkins, West Virginia. And as many uh, others, probably who are tuned in at this time. I'm excited to go to Rocky Grass Festival this weekend. I haven't been in, I don't remember how long, at least 10 years, maybe longer. So quite thrilled to go on back to Rocky Grass as, as a total civilian. I'm just going to hear the music and hang out and jam, uh, going with my girlfriend Marissa, and we're just gonna have a good old time. So lots of full circles happening here a few years after the pandemic. I'm, getting much more involved in the acoustic community again and with the artist works course being launched and everything um you know i was running a rock and roll band for a long time there grant farm and you know i've always been in the acoustic world i've always been doing the camps and doing my little bluegrass albums and stuff but you know looking to kind of do more in these coming years so going back to rocky grass is kind of a symbolic full circle for me First festival I ever went to, the first real bluegrass festival I went to, 20 years ago, 2002, 21 years ago. And then 20 years ago this year, I won the guitar contest. So I went back the following year, won the contest, and then came back in 2004 playing with the band, Adrian Young and Little Sadie. So that was my, my rocky grass progression. And then I've taught for a couple of years at Academy. And it's just an amazing... Uh, an amazing festival and anyone in the vicinity of Colorado uh, knows that if, if you've been there. Okay, so this song, Down Where the River Bends, it goes. In the key of B flat. And a one. Verse and chorus are the same chord changes. So like I said, I'll back this way down. Let's see what this tempo of this song is. That's about right. Okay, so my kickoff would go like this. A one, two, three. Okay, there you go. There's the melody. I know if this is a brand new song to you, you know, you're going to do your best. Um, but like I said, you can always go back to this on the archives and like learn those melodies and learn the songs by ear uh, if you want to spend a little more time on it. 
So here we go, kick us off in the key of B flat on down where the river bends. A one, two, one, two, three. fancy ending potential on this song but we just did a straight tag and a straight ending there it'd be a good one to work up a good vocal uh, vocal tag on that 
Okay, one last check in here before we get to the last song. We got Elizabeth is playing the Martin Sustainable Wood Dreadnought. Very cool. And Flying Film. That is Richard Birkin. Hi, Richard. I'll bet you're playing that fiddle, right? Saw and Away. And uh, Jake Bush playing all the, oh, all the instruments you know are involved here. Ryan Dick, yeah, the Rocky Grass, that's, that's kind of where it all started for me. I was a young college graduate, I already had a degree in guitar, and I was already flirting with the flat picking style and playing some bluegrass, um, but that's the festival that got me hooked when I went there as a 24-year-old aspiring guitarist. Um, okay. I guess I was 25. Yeah. And then I moved to Nashville like six months later. That's kind of how it went for me. I, I was I was all in at that point. Okay, over on Facebook land. Hello, Lori. Heading out to the dance pavilion for the first dance of old time week there at Augusta. Wonderful. Okay, so we got one more song on the slow jam and then we will come right back around at quarter till to start the uh, mid-tempo jam. So again, thanks for being here, checking in with me. Sounds like there's quite a storm outside here in Denver. It'll be exciting. I'll go take a peek uh, if I have a moment to take a break here. Um, as always, I appreciate the donations very much. Of course, it's not required, but it really, really does help. So thank you. If you're throwing in even like a five or a 10 or whatever you're throwing in, it's, it's really helpful. So appreciate that. And let's see, what else coming up? After this week at Rocky Grass, I'm going to be back on the river for a chunk of time guiding and entertaining folks with a drift dinosaur out there in Dinosaur National Monument. There are still, I think, a handful of seats left on some of these multi-day launches if you want to check the website, adrift.com. And you can just call the number two and, and ask someone in the office if there's any tickets available for any of those launches. You can see all the launches on the website. And also the daily trip runs all the way through September and it's a beautiful daily daily stretch. It's nine miles through Split Mountain uh, Canyon. There's class two and three rapids and the most beautiful scenery in this gorgeous deep canyon out in the middle of Dinosaur. You can't access this except by raft. So um, it's, it's the most beautiful daily stretch that I know of. So that's always there as well. And then I got some gigs in August. We have Beanstalk Festival at Rancho Del Rio, another rafting destination, of course. We have another outpost there under the name of Stand Up Paddle Colorado. I'll be out there paddleboarding, of course, around that time. And yeah, and that's about it. A lot of river stuff. And of course, Artist Works Academy, I'll be keeping up on video exchanges. And you all know how to find me. Uh, just hit me up anytime if you have any questions or uh, anything else you need from me. Okay, Old Home Place. This one's for Marissa. This is her favorite song. And Marissa, if you are tuned in, I know you're probably going to be singing harmony. So let's see. We're going to keep this still at an easy tempo, but I'm, I'm kind of bumping it up a little bit from where we were. In the key of B flat, Richard, I know you hate me for this, but this is a more comfortable key for me than the key of B. And it's good for you to practice your B flat on the fiddle. So this goes one, three. So this is the three dominant chord. So this is a secondary dominant. If, if you're capoed like I am, you're going to be playing a B7 chord. If you are not capoed, it's going to be a D7. Okay? So there we go. One, three, four, back to one. One, one, and a five. One, and three, and four, and a one. One, and five, and a one. That's the verse. Here's the chorus. Now that dominant two chord, 
Again, if I'm capoed like I am here, it's an A7. But if you're in concert key uh, and you're not capoed, it's a C7. To the five. Okay, kick us off on the old home place by the Dillards in the key of B flat. A one, two, one, two, three. It's been ten long years since I left my home in the holler where I was born. Where the cool fall nights make the woods smoke bright and the fox hunter blows his horn. Another verse. I fell in love with a girl from the town. Okay, we did it. There's the slow jam. So I'm gonna shut this down and come right back in just a few minutes with the mid-tempo. So refresh your pages at that time and you'll see the new thread and join us. Okay, thank you all so much.